Pressure comes from within. From the UK Sports Network. This is the UK Healthcare Mark Stoop Show. Talk with Coach Stoops by calling the Clark's Pump and Shop phone line at 859 280 CATS. That's 859 280 2287. Or statewide at 1 800 606 GAME. That's 1 800 606 4263. Or tweet your question to at UK Sports Network. The UK Healthcare Mark Stoop Show begins now. Alongside the coach, here's the voice of the Cats, Tom Leach. Welcome back for another season of Kentucky football. It kicks off this Saturday at noon Eastern time when the Wildcats take on the ULM Warhawks at Kroger Field. And we will be there with the call right here on these UK Sports Network stations. Glad to have you on board for our first edition of the Mark Stoops Show, UK Healthcare Mark Stoops Show for the next hour talking about Kentucky football with you. You can tweet in your questions to at UK Sports Network, or you can give us a call, and we'll get to uh, a chat with Coach Stoops here in just a moment, and then we'll get to your questions about the upcoming football season for the Wildcats. We'll get to our first break and be right back on the UK Healthcare Mark Stoops Show. Let's go. You're listening to the UK the Healthcare numbers. Mark Stoops Cats, 630 WLAP. You're up. Welcome back in to the UK Healthcare Mark Stoops show. And you can tweet us at UK Sports Network or you can give us a call on the Clark's Pump and Shop phone line at 800-606-4263. Inside Lexington, call direct 280-CATS. That's 
2287. And, again, you can tweet to UK, at UK Sports Network or go on to the Kentucky Football Facebook page. Uh, and it's going to be a traditional game day environment again. Thank goodness everybody will enjoy that. Tailgating, the catwalk, bands, cheerleaders, all the college football traditions that BBN knows and loves at Kroger Field. And Mark Stoops will be quite happy to see a big crowd there for Saturday afternoon's opener. Am I correct? You are correct, <laughs> Tom. That is going to be uh, a lot of fun for us. We cannot wait. Uh, we're so fired up about this season, uh, so fired up about having the fans in the stadium. And whoever would have thought I'd have been so excited to sit next to you, Tom. Be that back is a up. shocker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. But to be back to normal, I mean, it's been a while since we just had our show and been able to sit here and uh, see people, see people and uh, <laughs> have a good conversation about football. So uh, really excited about getting back to normal. I see you're laid back and you're cu cutting up a little bit. <laughs> that that kind of feeds into a good first question. Yeah, yeah. As people are saying, boy, he looks more relaxed than ever. And somebody yeah. asked Vince the other day and yeah. a big dog said, well, usually coaches that are relaxed – and uh, at ease, it's because yeah. they think they have a good team. So uh, is he right? Uh, the big dog, I'm gonna cut him off. <laughs> you know, I think. I, but you know, what are we gonna do? He gets a lot of good sound bites. He everybody. does. He's good. He's, he's good, good for the media. Business. He's good for the media. He's bad for me sometimes. No, no, he's good for me 99 percent. Yes, he is. 98 um, percent. But no, I think uh, you know we're we've been hard at it. We've been working, and uh, our team's working hard. And and uh, you know, I'm excited about just getting back to, to normal, like you said, and having a football season and not having a 10 SEC game schedule. And, and uh, you know, so uh, I just – I like this football team. I like our staff. And, you know, I like what I do. So uh, I don't like uh, coming into a bad work environment every day. You know, this this business is hard enough. And uh, we, we certainly put in the hours. So I want to enjoy myself while I'm there. Uh, you've got uh, a new offensive coordinator, so the installation of, of that – uh, offense started back in in the spring but it, are you at a point where you've got everything in you need to have in to start a season yes I feel like we have been honing in you know the past couple of weeks um, just getting cleaner you know getting that operation cleaner and and you know it does help not that you know over any one particular quarterback or anything but as you narrow it down and have the same voice in the huddles and getting more reps. I mean, just reps alone helps quarterbacks. Um, so, you know, I feel like it's getting cleaner. We're getting closer to game ready. I mentioned that, you know, last week in the press conference that when we stepped off the field, you know, last Saturday after the, the scrimmage, I wanted to be, you know, close to game ready. Obviously, we had a whole week of practice in between there I gave the players off this past weekend to get fresh get their legs back up underneath them and we had a really good Monday they looked really fast uh, looked clean uh, the operation is getting closer and so I like that tell fans what that new offense will will look like obviously one of the things they're going to see the team in the huddle and the quarterback under center more than they have in a long long time yeah but what are some things that they'll notice? Well, those are things that really you don't see a hell of a heck of a lot of in, in college football yeah. anymore is getting in the huddle. But you will see a, still a great sense of urgency. You know, you'll see us getting in and out of the huddle, uh, get to the line of scrimmage with a sense of urgency. You're going to see uh, more motions and shifts than you're used to. Um, and, uh, you know, that definitely, you know, obviously different plays. Um, but, but the whole operation will be – uh, will be different. Is that uh, at all uh, with Liam coming from the NFL, from the Rams staff, is it, say, more more verbiage in the playbook the, yes. for the quarterback to call, things like yeah, that? Yeah, without a doubt. You know, there definitely is. And uh, it's an NFL, you know, system. And so there, there definitely is some verbiage. We have ways to communicate, to go faster and change tempos. Uh, but but uh, it certainly is uh, an NFL system. Speaking of tempo, uh, mm -hmm. the team you will play to start the season uh, has a new – coaching staff led by Terry Bowden uh, and his offensive coordinators, Rich Rodriguez. And uh, you guys don't know much more about it than what you know about those guys from previous stops. So they obviously had a lot of struggles last season in their programs so while they have a new coach. But what are, how are you preparing for a, a team where I don't think they even put out a depth chart? No, they, they have so many new players. You know, it's hard to keep track of it all. But we have to go with the system, you know, as we look at uh, – you know, Rich Rod, you know, I've known Rich for a long time, have great respect for him. 
Um, you have to go back and, and look at uh, his previous stops. We look, look uh, a couple years ago at Old Miss, you know, what he did uh, when he had a more traditional quarterback and not, you know, a guy like Lynn, you know. And, uh, and then, you know, you go back to his Arizona days as well. Um, you, you, ha you have to try to look ahead and anticipate a little bit, maybe things that have hurt us be before that can fit into his system and what he wants to do and how to – uh, move the football and and so we have to be ready for a lot of things we've looked at a, a, a lot uh, a lot of film I mean we've gone back and looked at you know his Arizona days his early Arizona days we've looked at Old Miss um, you know and the same on the defensive side of the ball he comes from Boise State so you, you obviously have to watch the Boise tape but you also he has he has deep Clemson, Clemson roots um, so um, you know that he hired two defensive assistance also from Clemson so you have to think uh, that you're going to see some some of the the, the Clemson defense uh, as well mixed in there so there's a lot for us to to look at um, and get prepared for that's for sure this is the UK healthcare Mark Stoops show and we'll be right back tweet your questions at UK Sports Network give us a call on the Clark's Pump and Shop phone line 800-606-4263 or inside Lexington 280 Cats or post on the Kentucky Football Facebook page, and we'll be right back on the UK Sports Network. Wildcats, 630 WLAP. You're up. A couple of reminders for the BBN for Saturday's first game. Uh, first, it is mobile ticketing uh, for fans this year. So use your phone as your ticket. Easy, safe, convenient. Season ticket holders, individual game buyers will use the UK Athletics app to access and manage tickets. Parking permits will also be issued via mobile delivery. And 
Want to remind everybody to arrive early. Sometimes that is a, an issue for those early kicks. This one's at noon Eastern. So make sure you have your tickets and parking passes all taken care of well in advance of heading to Kroger Field. And then arrive early so you can – you and the uh, university can sort out any first game issues that arrives. And then you can get in uh, the stadium and be ready for the opening kickoff of Kentucky football against the ULM Warhawks this coming Saturday afternoon. Let's uh, get to a call to start things off. We will start with Kevin listening down in Tampa, Florida. Kevin, what do you have for Coach Stoops? Hello, Kevin. He's gone. All right, let's move on. Let's try Jeff in Tennessee. Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, Tom. Hey, Jeff. Uh, uh, Coach Stoops, I just wanted to uh, ask how your brother was. I know it's I know, I know he was supposed to be inducted in the Hall of Fonts of Hall of Fame. I don't know if they've done that with the COVID and everything, but I hope he's doing well. And number two, um, I've seen any predictions anywhere from Kentucky finishing second to fourth, which I know you don't believe that. You believe you're going to win the East. But uh, I, know, I know we have quite a bit of talent. I know you're pretty excited about, about the ball club. What do, you, what do you think about defensively? I mean, I know White's back, and we've been a pretty strong defense for the last – last few uh, few years. I know everybody's excited about our offense, but do you think we're just as good defensively as we were the last few years? And, and finally, good luck this season. I'll definitely be watching every week and uh, go Cats. See ya. I, I appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that. And they are actually doing the Hall of Fame this year, so I'm proud of Bob being inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. He'll be inducted, I believe that's in uh, first or second week in December, if I'm not mistaken. So second week in December. Uh, so uh, we'll all be out there uh, watching watching him and uh, be inducted and very proud of him for that. Um, and, yes, defensively, I feel very good. We have quite a few players returning. That's good news. We have some experience on the defensive side of the ball. And, uh, you know, guys up front, you know, Josh Paschal, Marquan have looked really good, DeAndre Square uh, at the linebacker, and then Yusuf Corker in the, in the, in the secondary. So you got some leadership at all three levels of the defense, guys that have played a little bit. So uh, we're excited about them. And you're right, everybody loves talking about the offense. And, and listen, I, I understand that. You know, we, we've um, talked a lot about it. I'm excited about it, but uh, equally um, – is is uh, excited about our defense. Uh, we've played good defense over the years, and we look to continue that this year. Thank you, Jeff. You uh, mentioned at your news conference today you're particularly excited about this group of uh, newcomers in the freshman class. Yeah, I just feel like across the board they're really, you know, some good players and, and guys that have uh, showed up and, you know, they, they do things right, work uh, really hard, and – and uh, they've been they've been fun, you know. They've been fun fun to coach. Yeah, two uh, rookie linebackers are, uh, could be in your rotation: Wallace, uh, Trevin Wallace, and uh, Martez Thrower. Yeah, Trevin and, and uh, Martez are, are very good football players, man. They 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 get to the ball. They're very instinctual, very athletic. So, um, you know, really excited about those guys. I think they're, you know, they just have that ability to find a football and tackle it. You know, that's, that's a big thing at middle linebacker. you got to dissect an awful lot. There's a lot of mis, misdirection anymore in, in, in college football, and, and those guys seem to have a really good knack for, for getting to the to the football. And, and uh, so we're, we're very excited. And then, uh, you know, a guy that probably doesn't get talked about uh, very much is Saunders, you know, uh, Khalil, our, our uh, defensive tackle, uh, big big boy you know he's about six five and has that length we're looking for and uh, he's really showed up in every scrimmage and every practice and he's a guy that uh, you know really excites us you know you know me I like the I like the big guys you know on offense and and on defense you got to be good up front on the on the line of scrimmage and uh, excited about him and in that sophomore class of of, of uh, D linemen you know they're second year guys um, even if they're redshirted you know just very good players you know with uh Trayvon Ripka and uh, Octavius and uh, Josiah and Justin Rogers and all those guys are getting better as well. This is the UK Healthcare Mark Stoops Show. Give us a call, tweet in your questions, or post on the Kentucky Football Facebook page. We'll be right back here on the UK Sports Network. We work.
Sports, 630 WLAP. You're up. Kentucky football opens the new season on Saturday against the ULM Warhawks, and it's presented by the One Holland Group, Skyline Chili, La Rosa's Pizza, and First Watch, Kentucky's home of the trifecta of taste. As uh, the Wildcats get set to, to kick it off at noon Eastern, that means we'll start our coverage with the Don Franklin Auto Countdown to Kickoff Show at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Let's go back to uh, Kevin in Tampa, who's back on the line with us now. Kevin, you're up with Coach Stoops. Hey, Coach Stoops, thank you so much. Yep, thanks, Kevin. My question is, we've done great uh, in Michigan, Ohio, and Kentucky, but what about Indiana and Illinois in the recruiting ground? How do you see us improving our footprint in those states? Uh, we will see. Um, we we uh, are dabbling, you know, in some other areas. It just depends. A lot of times where our coaches have, uh, you know, have recruited in the past and maybe have some inroads, um, you know, we could, uh, you know, only go so far. You know, that's that's one thing. I mean, we try to uh, constantly expand, get the best players we can. Uh, a lot of times we'll do some of that and reach out and see how much interest we can get and, and uh, kind of roll from there. But you only have so much manpower to put people in so many states and, uh, you know, got to be a little bit careful about getting stretched out too far. Kevin, thank you for the question. Got to ask you a quarterback question. Mm-hmm. Will Levis, how's he uh, looked since he was named your starter? Will uh, looks uh, very, very good, very comfortable, um, natural leader, um, has a great sense of urgency, uh, works at it exceptionally hard, um, loves studying the game. He's a natural leader. I'm, I'm very excited about it and, uh, you know, can't wait to, to you know, continue to put the – I almost fell into the trap, Tom. I almost said I can't wait till Saturday, but we'll, I can't wait till Tuesday. <laughs> let's, one, let's day get, at let's time. one day at a time. Let's have a good yeah. practice tomorrow and roll from there. Uh, Will, you've talked about leadership from, from the moment you named him your starter. You mentioned that. I think it was either you or Liam that used the word presence, but, but mm-hmm. Liam's talked about that component of it too, in addition to the arm strength that was the, the first talking point about Will. How did that leadership component, since it's clearly something that uh, – he scores highly and how did that show itself early on it's it has to be authentic players can see guys that are trying too hard in that area um you know in you know some players you know when some players speak people listen to them and others sometimes talk and and they really don't you know and uh he's just the type of guy that has that presence uh he's very authentic what he says is is meaningful and uh, people can relate to that uh Wadendale Robinson, another guy you got via the, the transfer portal uh, that uh, you, you wanted to get out of high school. Now he's back here, and uh, it uh, only uh, serves to remind you how good he was coming out of high school, right? Oh, there's no doubt. Wondell and I were out there chatting in between uh, one of the special teams period today and uh, just talking about some things. But, uh, yeah, j- again, just a wonderful young man, um, great player, um, different type of leader. He's the type of guy that kind of just goes out there and he, he works his tail off, but he's constantly working on his craft. He really is. I, I love that about him. Uh, very coachable. You know, sometimes, you know, a very dynamic young man. Sometimes, you know, maybe he all thinks he has all the answers or doesn't, you know, isn't as coachable as others, but man, he's he's one of the best. He's, he just works really hard, uh, constantly taking the medicine, so to speak, you know, getting, getting the coaching. And he takes it right to the field, and he can apply it. And he's getting better every day. So he's really fun uh, to have on our team. And I'm very thankful to have him. We were talking about uh, young guys earlier. One guy, and he was with you last year, but uh, Isaiah Cummings has generated a lot of buzz since the move to tight end. Mm-hmm. Sometimes those things, it can be a case where the guy really takes off for the first few days or weeks, and then it maybe hits a wall. Is he still a guy you think can be a big part of your offense? I do. Uh, I think he's just been very natural there from the start. Kind of surprising that you can make that switch and that transition happen so fast. And maybe that's been a little unfair because you're putting a lot on a young man. You know, I mean, it still uh, takes some experience and some time, but he is really um, one of those guys that seems to show up every day uh, in, in practice. And and uh, he is very natural. And, again, he's one of those uh, people that I talk about all the time and, and – uh, you would probably get tired of hearing it, but he's just such a great kid. You know, he works. He doesn't say a word other than, you know, 
take the coaching and working hard and trying to get better and uh you know willing to to move the tight end he knew we were a little bit thin there and he's really shining there so i wish him uh, the best i hope he has a big year i believe he will he was one of the guys that the two scrimmages i uh, saw made one of the more impressive individual plays i want to say it was a third down pass to keep a drive going and that was Bo insane. flips it up, and he goes up between two defenders with one hand and makes the catch. Uh, I know what play you were talking about. That was in scrimmage one. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bo, Bo did a nice job of buying some time. Really had nowhere to go with the ball. The only place he could go with the ball is where he threw it. Right. And Isaiah went up and uh, made a great one-handed snag and kept a third down going, and we went on to score a touchdown on that drive. And, um, you know, those are the kind of plays we need. And those are the kinds of plays you see around this league every Saturday. Well, and that's that's what I've been talking about. Those are some of those plays where everybody's covered and just somebody special makes a great individual place. And, uh, you know, you need that. And, uh, and you know, I saw that out of Isaiah. And, and, again, I've mentioned it before, but it's true. You take him and you move him from an outside wide receiver and you move him to tight end. Now, all of a sudden, you're saying, wow, he's very athletic. When, you, when he's outside, you're saying that's a big, strong guy and he looks good and he makes competitive catches. Uh, but, uh, you know, he goes from, you know, a rather pedestrian speed outside to a very athletic, fast tight end. So, um, you know, very helpful to us and I think very helpful to, to him, which is uh, what you're most excited about. Let's get a call in before we go to the bottom of the hour break. We'll go to Columbus and Chad. Go ahead. You're on with Mark Stoops. Hey, Coach. Hey, I just wanted to make a comment. I heard your show today at noon, and some reporter said you were boring. And I'm like, that reporter's out of his mind, dude. You do player serves. <laughs> you do chance. Yeah. You, uh, you, you're the most charismatic coach we've had in years, and I mean that. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm trying one way or the other. I'm just – I am who I am. Uh, I don't like uh, players that aren't authentic, so I better be me no matter what. So uh, – I was having a little fun with them after that and just teasing them. But, uh, yeah, I always uh, enjoy. the. It's it's nice, just like I was joking with Tom, getting back together here in person. It's good with the media as well. You know, you know, you need to get in front of people. It uh, feels much more normal this year, so let's hope it stays that way. Thank you, Chet. It, it feels like in all walks of life mm -hmm. that uh, authentic, uh, when it's not there, yeah. it – it really is glaring for young people. That, that's you're exactly right. They'll see right through you, and uh, and that that's for sure. I think they'll also see right through you know selfish people. If it's all about you, if it's about them, then you know you can say it all you want. It's about you know others. If you if you really don't lead that way, then they're gonna see right through you, and they're not buying what you're selling. Halfway home on this edition of the UK Healthcare Mark Stoop Show, you can tweet questions at UK Sports Network and give us a call or you can post to the Kentucky Football Facebook page. Join Christy, Dusty, and Jeremy for the Don Franklin Auto Countdown to kick off coverage of Kentucky and ULM starting at 10 a.m. Eastern Saturday. And they have a new location. They'll be outside Gate 4 at the Big Blue Zone. Food trucks there, a chance for fans to win some prizes. So stop by and see our pregame show uh, starting at 10 Eastern time leading up to a noon kickoff. We'll be right back here on the UK Healthcare Mark Stoops Show on the UK Sports Network.
You can reach us here on the UK Healthcare Mark Stoops Show via Twitter at UK Sports Network or on the Kentucky Football Facebook page, or you can give us a call on the Clark's Pump and Shop phone line inside Lexington. It's 280-CATS, elsewhere 800-606-4263. A reminder that Saturday's game between Kentucky and ULM, presented by the One Holland Group, Sky, at Skyline Chili, the Rose's Pizza, and First Watch, Kentucky's home of the trifecta of taste. We have uh, about half the show left here to chat with Coach Stoops, and we've got a question off the Facebook page from Mark, the Kentucky Football Facebook page. Uh, Liam Cohen, you uh, went out and looked for a new offensive coordinator, and you found your guy uh, on the staff of the Rams in the National Football League. What was it that uh, stood out about Liam? What will he bring to the job that's uh, new for yep. BBN? Well, uh, there was many reasons. Um, obviously, I vetted you know, quite a few uh, candidates and talked to quite a few. And I really spent a lot of time uh, looking at, you know, thinking about exactly what I wanted to be and what I felt like we could be at Kentucky. You know, it's one thing to say, well, you know, Tom, who, you know, who wouldn't want to look like Oklahoma on offense, right? <laughs> you know, or, you know, or, you know, they, they have some really good players, but they've also been working at that system a long time. They've recruited very well to that system. And, you know, Lincoln knows it inside and out and a lot of, lot of reasons. Um, but uh, you have to also understand what you think you can recruit, what you're, all, what you're already good at, you know, and, and, and we are good at being physical. We play defense, you know, and, and uh, you know, needed to improve in the passing game. I felt like we had to capitalize on the physicality and the running part. Who, you know, is, is good at, at benefiting from that? Who, who does a great job of play action? You know, so if you can run the ball, you ought to be able to throw it off some play action and make some hay on first and second down. If you really look at NFL football, big plays happen on first, second down. You know, the predictable pass is not a great place to be, you know, for anybody, um, especially when, you, you know, uh, being at Kentucky or most of the rest of the SEC. If you're in predictable pass, it's, it's very tough unless you have a bunch of freaks you know, running around. And uh, we hope to have that, and we're going to rec- continue to recruit some freaks. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not like we have four or five of them out there right now running around in a bunch of time to throw the ball down the field, right? Yeah. So you have to capitalize, and you have to look at what, what, it, what you know, what I, what I want this program to look like. I understood there was areas already well documented. I addressed it in certain areas where we needed to improve. I felt like uh, this system and this guy was the right guy. You know, Liam was the right guy for the job. I felt like this was the right system. Uh, it has the balance that I'm looking for. Uh, you need to be able to be physical and run the ball to set up play action and to make some uh, hay on first, second down. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a good mixture. And, again, like I said, uh, it, you know, things take time. You know, all of a sudden, you know, if game one, uh, you know, I told our team this. I think I talked about it. I don't remember if I talked about this in the press conference or not. I think I did in the press conference, but I go to my son's game, you know, and maybe, you know, my son's, you know, maybe they were supposed to win or whatever. And it's like things don't happen just just like that. You know, you have to play each play. You have to play each quarter. Eventually, uh, things are going to work out. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm bent. I was about to say the word that goes before that, but I'm, I'm bent on improving this football team and taking it to another level. And uh and I believe this is the guy to do it. I believe this is the system to do it. It's not going to happen overnight. There's going to be some ups and some downs. But I am very excited about what's going on. While we're talking about staff, uh, mm-hmm. there was a, a staff change announced at the wide receiver position. Scott Woodward, who has some experience with Liam, uh, is going to take over the coaching of your wide receivers. Uh, so yeah. what was your thinking yeah. there? Yeah, just you know, have a great confidence in Coach Bob Knight as well. Uh, but Coach Woodward – um, you know, has some experience with Liam and, you know, maybe a big picture uh, help in that way. So that was just a decision I made, and uh, we're going we're gonna to go that route uh, this season. Uh, as far as uh, players' uh, is injuries, J.J. Weaver's coming back from a, a knee injury. Up, uh, and But you said that he is actually – the red jersey's off, which means he's full go, right? He, he is, but we're still being smart with him, you know, and not trying to – get him tangled up in a bunch of piles and things of that nature and uh um, but he is uh out there practicing he's cleared Uh, obviously it's going to take you know a bit of time to get him back to full strength and i want to be 
um, you know, somewhat cautious with him. I always uh, try to err on the side of the players that way. You know, I want them back at full strength, and, and I want them confident uh, when they return. You said today your punter, uh, guy Wilson Berry, who's – uh, the uh, thought to be the successor to Max uh, is battling an injury. He's been just fighting a bit of a aggravating back. I believe he'll be fine. It's just a matter of cutting back maybe a bit on on some reps for him. But uh, but he he'll, he'll be out there this week ready to roll. Uh, you uh, there are some names that would be on that uh, depth chart that you released today. But there are six of your players that are uh, in the, involved in an issue in the legal system. Mm-hmm. You talked about it today. Is there anything you want to add about their status? No, I really don't. I want our san- our fans excited as I am about let's get get out there and ready to play. I um, felt the need, um, you know, to you know address it and and and, and um, stand with my players and uh, behind them. And believe me, uh, we know we're far from perfect. In you know, but we're, you know, people are human. They make some mistakes and, uh, and um, you know, but I, I stand behind them and uh, I, I feel confident, um, you know, that the legal system will work. Let me ask you a Twitter question before we get to mm-hmm. the next break. This is from Mike. Uh, do you know if the uh, Hurricane Ida had any impact on ULM's preparation for this week? I have no idea. I know it has an impact on us, you know, so. Yeah. That, that, Families that, and things. Yeah, well, that and, and and just you know with with our practice. Oh you know, yeah, and, with what we're getting. Mean, yeah, what's what coming we're getting Kentucky. and everything. I mean, yeah. it, you know, it, uh, it does not benefit us. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess you'll be indoors tomorrow. Yeah, and we got a track around our indoor. Yeah, I mean, I don't even have I don't have a hundred yard field, so um, yeah, it, it it impacts us heavily. Let's get to a break. We'll come back. A couple more segments left. You can tweet in questions like Mike did to at UK Sports Network. You can post on the Kentucky Football Facebook page, or you can give us a call on the Clark's Pump and Shop phone line. It's the UK Healthcare Mark Stoops Show, and this is the UK Sports Network. Welcome back into the UK Healthcare Mark Stoops show. Kroger will host a VIP tailgate event, which will begin two hours prior to kickoff for each home game. It's on the lawn next to BCTC. Kroger customers can accumulate fan reward points by purchasing participating items at their local Kroger stores all across Kentucky. Then go to Kroger.com slash fan rewards to redeem. These points can be used for free admission to the Kroger tailgate experience, including food and beverage. Customers will be sent an email confirmation that can be shown at the entrance to gain admission to the tailgate. Let's go to a call. Uh, Aaron in Louisville, you're next up with Coach Stoops. Hey, Aaron, you there? How are you doing, Coach Stoops? Good. How are you? 
I'm doing good. I am really, really sorry about this football team this year. I went up to Fan Day by myself, drove up from Louisville. Yeah. That's how good a fan I am. And I know some that kid Rayshon Lewis, he is a ball player for a receiver. I mean, yeah, he, he is, Aaron. He, yeah. yeah, it's how much time is he gonna get this year, Coach Stoops? He has uh, worked Thank his you. way. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. I appreciate it. And thanks for uh, coming to Fan Day and watching practice uh, and, uh, you know, supporting our team. We greatly appreciate that. And, uh, um, you know, I really think Rayshon's going to uh, help us. I mean, he moved himself into a, a backup role, which says a lot about him, and made quite a few plays early in camp. Maybe not as many uh, down the stretch, but he still uh, plays extremely hard and has shown up, and I love that about him. He's a competitor, and uh, and we're excited to have him and, and uh, looking forward to see what he can do. We know that – we talked about Wandale earlier. We mm-hmm. know what Josh Ali can do. Uh, beyond that, there are a lot of guys, and you could look at that group and say mm-hmm. – you could make a case for any one of those guys to be the, the next on the receiver uh, rundown. Who's caught your eye? Well, Whether it be Rashawn. You know, uh, we talked about Rashawn. You know, I think Tay-Tay is a guy that I've been waiting for to, to break out. I feel like he has some speed that we need. Um, you know, we got Isaiah Epps back who's been banged up, you know, the past couple years. So uh, it'll be nice to, to get him back at, at, at full strength as well. Um and Chauncey's a guy that, that has shown up, you know, some as well. So Yeah, Chauncey Mag went mm-hmm. in and Dekel Kratos was making a, a nice Well, Dekel was statement. definitely, and then he got hurt. And uh, we'll still, you know, we just have to see how that knee, knee heals up. I was asked about that today, and you know, he's not quite even, you know, I wouldn't say very close to coming back at full strength just yet. Uh, we got to make sure that heals up good and uh, – you know, he's a guy with another uh, very bright future, so I want to make sure he gets healed up. Uh, from the Twitter feed, at, uh, at Wildcat Willie tweets in, how much will the tight ends be used in Coach Cohen's new offense? This could be from Vince. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think this is a pretty regular question, Tom. <laughs> I think, you know, but, but not just from, you know, our fan base. I think that across the United States, I think this is a, just a normal question. And, you know, it's a fair question, and uh, you know because we see, um, you know, in in football, people watch you know a lot of games like we all do, in college and in the NFL. And when you have those mismatches, and you have those tight ends making plays, we all like it, you know. And uh, I think a lot of that will be determined about how well we play at that position. I'm very excited about it. Uh, I really am. Uh, obviously, Justin coming back. Uh, Brendan Bates, I, I believe, is just one of the one of the best players we have on our team, you know, and uh, and he's a complete tight end. And then you have Isaiah who can run, and and so I'm excited about all those guys. And obviously, I wish Keaton didn't get hurt because he is, you know, one of those those uh, freaks you're looking for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Big old six foot six guy that can run and and uh, big target and a great catch radius, so we're going to miss him, but uh, have him healing up right now, be back next year. So we feel like we have some options there. Jeff and I were watching a couple of the early scrimmages last year, and Bates was a guy that I know we, we were talking about just watching the, the practices and, yeah. and scrimmages, and I, it felt like he was going to take off at some point, and then he got hurt. Yeah, he. Uh, I look forward to him having – I feel like he's going to have a big year. I really do. He's just one of those guys. He's got – He's got a lot of pop to him. He's very sudden. He's strong. He's, um, you know, very sudden. He can make, you know, the, the very explosive blocks. And then, uh, you know, he's a guy that can run and catch. So, you know, he, he certainly looks apart. Let's go back to the phones. On the Clark's Pump and Shop phone line is Madison from Henderson. Henderson. Hello, Madison. How you doing? How you doing, Tom and Mark? Good. Good, going? Madison. How how have you been? How's the off season been well, treating I, you? I've been uh, – I've been looking forward to this season for a long time. Thank you, buddy. It's uh, really uh, good. To, I, good to you, hear from you again. You're you're really uh, you've really turned this program program around, and I look for more fun stuff this year. Thank you, buddy. I, I got a I got a couple of things for you. All right, we uh, know. Two, one is how does it? How do you feel about going up against another Bobby Bowden? I know you talked about that. Mm-hmm in your press conference. But how do you feel about going up against another one of mm-hmm. Bowden's kids? And two, how do you think uh, 
our offense will do against uh, Blue Zan Monroe's defense that isn't very good this year. Okay. Well, uh, you know, it's an honor to coach against any any Bowden. You know, it's a, a family that you have to have great respect for. Uh, they stand for all the right things. Um, I said in my press conference today that it was an honor for me to coach at Florida State. I did not have the privilege of coaching with ba Coach Bowden, but I came in right after he left, and his legacy is strong. And I walked by Coach Bowden every day. Of course, he was he was bronze. It was a bronze statue right in front of our building. And, um, you know, if you're a football coach and of, of many ages, uh, you, you, you have great respect for him because you watched him and you saw him do it the right way for so many years. And so you have great respect. I know Terry just a little bit. And, uh, you know, he's a, a great coach in himself. And uh, it'll be really good to see him. And I know he's, uh, much like his father, very likable, very charismatic. And so, um, you know, I can't say we're, we're best friends or anything, but uh, do look forward to seeing him. And as our offense, you know, as, as I told the guys today in the meeting, um, you know, we really have to play one play at a time. There's going to be some ups and there's going to be some downs through this season. And everybody's excited and we all just want it to be one great big highlight reel. And that's just not realistic. You still have to do the little things. You know, when you do the little things well, big things will happen. You know, and so if you're physical – and everybody on the same page, and we have the right operation, and, you know, we have those four, you know, three, four, five-yard runs, you know, that set up the boots, that set up the play action. You have to have efficient runs that set up big plays. So, you know, it all goes together. So uh, I'm excited about our offense. I know our fans are. I can't wait to get you out there and, you know, rooting for us. But, again, it's, uh, you know, it's 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 going to – you know, there's going to be some ups and downs, but you're going to like it. You're, you're going to be pleased, and uh, I feel very confident in, in the overall product. Thank you, Madison. Uh, by the way, uh, speaking of fans, remember tickets are on your phone this year for uh, ease and safety and convenience. So you uh, have the UK Athletics app downloaded so you can manage your tickets. Parking permits will be issued via mobile delivery as well. And then uh, we're asked to remind everybody – to make sure you get there early and have the, the app downloaded, have all your tickets, your parking pass ready to go so there's no uh, holdups. It is the first game for everybody, so there's always uh, an issue or two that comes up. Uh, so get those worked out in advance if you can. There will be the uh, Chevy Catwalk, the Coca-Cola Fan Zone, the bands, the cheerleaders, the tailgating, the whole regular game day experience. But just make sure you're there early because it is a noon kickoff. Our coverage will start with the Don Franklin Auto Countdown to kickoff show at 10 a.m. Eastern right here on the UK Sports Network.
This is the home of the Wildcats. 630 WLAP. Just a couple of minutes left on this edition of the UK Healthcare Mark Stoop Show. Um, <laughs> we've gone the whole show. We've really, we haven't brought up Chris Rodriguez's name yet. <laughs> because it goes to show you you got to take advantage how dependable and, and consistent he's been. Tell me how he'll fit into Liam's scheme with more reliance on an outside zone scheme. Well, he, he, he'll he be very difficult to get down because one thing about running some outside stuff is uh, you should get uh, quite a few arm tackles, you know. Um, hopefully not get as many bodies squaring up on him all the time. And uh, he's so strong, uh, he should be able to produce some some big plays that way. And uh, Donut, Mike Drennan, mm-hmm. you guys switched him to running back, and uh, Coach Settles had, had recruited him as a running back when he was up in Wisconsin. And I thought when I when you as announced that, I thought mostly we'd just see him in pass catching roles. But I was impressed at how well he ran the ball inside yeah. the second scrimmage. Yeah, I think Michael's very natural inside runner. Um, you know he. He's a guy that has a different gear than a lot of our guys. You and I were just talking about Lavelle uh, right off off, cam- off camera or off uh, off the show in between uh, segments there. And Lavelle is a guy that we're very happy with. He's a, you know, Kentucky guy. And, you know, he runs the ball extremely hard, very reliable, does everything right. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously with Michael, you have some d- different gear. You know, you have a guy that can really – uh, taken up another level as far as top end speed and so happy with him Tisdale's really done some good things as well so we're we got quite a few backs anybody that's just really stood out to you from training camps beginning to now this this game week that's just got really brought it every day or that you think is really ready to take it to another level well I think you know we talk about him a lot but probably not enough is Josh Pascal. you know he's just uh he's just so darn uh good he works so hard you know he, he just is the most uh incredible human being really is just so coachable such a good leader plays so hard fundamentally tries to get better in everything he does you know that that takes a humble person you know here's a guy that's one of our better players and he just takes the coaching every day and just and absorbs it loves it lives up there what can i do better how can i do it better and then he goes out there and he plays so darn hard you know, he, he just he, – it's it's fun. You know, you know I'm a, you know, I'm a defensive coach, but I'm an effort every, – every coach is. Every coach 20. loves effort, you know, and he's one of those guys that just gives that great effort every play. I remember seeing his, his very first game down at, at Southern Miss, and he got in late, and uh, it was like a Jadavian Clowney-esque hit that yeah. he put on a guy. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing some more of those. Uh, good luck Saturday. Thank you very much, Tom. First game coming up noon Eastern out at Kroger Field. The Don Franklin Auto Countdown to kickoff coverage will get rolling from the Big Blue Zone outside Gate 4 at 10 a.m. on the U.K. Sports Network. This has been the U.K. Healthcare Show on the U.K. Sports Network. The U.K. Healthcare Mark Stoop Show was brought to you by Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, Central Bank, Kroger, U.K. Healthcare, the Kentucky Community and Technical College System, and by Coca-Cola. The Mark Stoop Show is an exclusive presentation of the U.K. Sports Network, powered by JMI Sports.